G'day, g'day guys. This is a quick one. This is don't blink and you'll miss it kind of video. So I'm scrapping some uh, prep orientation photos. So these were years ago, obviously, but I had a spare hour up my sleeve at, you know, four, five o'clock in the morning. And, you know, what else do I do but scrap? So um, <laughs> I know I'm odd, but hey, I like scrapping at that time of the morning. So I decided to pull out the 49th Market Art Options Viken Collection and I pulled out the green piece as a background piece with a purple border because the photos are Jen's wearing a purple shirt. Then I thought I didn't want to go full mixed media. I wanted to use a little bit but not a lot and just a little bit of ink to me is kind of like dry mixed media. It's not all wet and all the water and the watercolors and all that sort of stuff. So I was just, this page come together really quickly. And believe it or not, the inspiration for this picture, this layout came from the front page of the art options paper so the 49th of market see the see the bottom strip with all the different pages on the front i thought you know what i'm going to use that because we all get it when we get our our different collections that we get we get these extra bits why not use them let's use them so that's what i decided to do and it worked because these photos i just this is not the collection I planned on using for this particular one, but it totally worked. So I was really happy with it, how it turned out. So I'm showing you a way that you can make a really cute layout with just a few bits and pieces. And you know, if you don't want to go full mixed media, because I have had a few comments that some people don't like a lot of mixed media, can I do some pages that have a lot less mixed media on them? So here's my one for the week or one for the fortnight that doesn't have as much mixed media on it. Now, on this particular layout, I do pull in some stamps and just to help carry some of these pages. So obviously if you've ever bought a 49th of Market or seen one of their collections, they quite often have on the A side then the B side, right? So the A side is usually the really patterned, um, quite mixed media looking and then on the other side it's quite neutral so it'll just be more sort of a solid green or like you can see here on this particular background it's not as in your face with the pattern now for me I thought these squares I thought you know what I, I and I literally just put this down like this and went don't fuss with it I actually like that look I like how that turned out so this is what I decided to do. So I ended up ditching most of the darker ones and I ended up going with the floral pages. Believe it or not, they're the ones I like in the 12 by 12s as well. So, you know, why not use them? So I decided when I used these, when I put these down, I thought they're nice, but they're not super bold. Now, I knew that I was going to use the inside piece. You saw me gut the background, the border that I've put around the outside. I gut that piece of paper so that I could um, use it for my... I've lost my words. Where did they go? Um, so, apologies, my dogs are barking because my daughter's home from work and I don't have the door closed. So apologies for that. And um, so I decided that what I was going to do was pull in a couple of stamps. Now these are some stamps that were kindly gifted to me by Sonia and thank you again. And these are Kayser Craft stamps. One is Havana Knights stamp set and one is called Amethyst stamp. Now, they're both Kayser Craft. I don't know if they're still available. I have no idea. Um, if Sonia watches this, she may put a comment down below whether they are or are not still available. Now, these are, I wanted to just create a little, a little, just a touch, just of a little bit of stamping to help lift the background 
to kind of support those squares a little bit more. So I know it sounds a little crazy, but they just look like they were floating. So they need to be grounded a little. Grounded is probably a better way of wording it. Now, what I'm actually doing here is I'm not using the first generation stamp. I'm doing second and in some cases third generation stamping. If you don't know what that actually is, all it means, it's just a scrapping term for when you ink your stamp up the first time, the first stamp you do is first generation. The second one, second stamp you do without re-inking it is second gen, third gen, fourth gen, right? So you can see me with my piece of paper off to the side there where I'm doing some of them, some of the stamps I'm doing first generation and some I'm doing second and third. And you'll see what I mean in a little minute. So the leaves I decided, I did those with my Distress Oxides and I used Bundled Sage. And not because I was trying to match the green with the green background, I actually wanted it to be a couple of shades darker. So that's where I went with that. Now, this is where you see me stamping off on the edge. So you can see me stamping and stamping off to the edge. So these yellow, I wanted to bring in just a hint of yellow, but I didn't want it in your face. And it's because I wanted to, I don't know how that green square got back on there, but don't panic. I do realize it's there and move it. Now, as you can see, I was having a play with a couple of the different stamps. Some of them looking at the stamp, I thought, yep, that's the one I wanted. But once I stamped it, I realized hmm, maybe it's not the one I need. So I was having a bit of a play and I was just using these. So what you can see me not on camera doing is I'm actually wiping a little bit of the ink off. So off the sections, I don't want to actually stamp on the page. So I'm just adding a little bit of a yellow flower to these leaves and I'm just creating sort of two flowers or three flowers roughly on each stamped leaf sprout I'm gonna call it that and just to bring in a little bit of the yellow because Jen is actually playing this board if you've got young children dead set these things are amazing they've got like little there so there's a magnet pen and they've got little circles and you can just create drawings with them with the magnet pen and you drop them into their little circle bits it's really cool anyway so I wanted a little bit more yellow on there so I just swiped a bit of bundled sage and fossilized amber on my plastic stamping platform there and I just dragged my gesso pen through it a uh, gesso brush through it and I'm just doing a little bit of hello Taylor hello so Taylor's just got home from work anyway she yes so I was just doing a little bit I didn't want to go overboard because I'm trying to make this not about the mixed media I want to show you how you can use a little bit of ink just to enhance what you've got a little bit more on top of the background if you want to you don't have to if this looks way too busy for you because these are water reactive inks you could just spritz this with water run some paper towel or your microfiber cloth whichever you use and just run that across the top of it and lift some of the ink off the page that will give you a more watercolor look a not so perfect look if that makes sense and I to be honest with you I got to the end of this layout and went I love it it's so easy and it's so simple and I absolutely loved it now I did pull in one extra um, stamp ink I bought a, it's a versifying clear ink in Monarch. Now these are stamping inks. If you want a crystal clear perfect stamp every time, Versafine Claire are amazing. Now I don't have all of them. I love the ones I've got. I would like to 
maybe check out maybe some of the archival inks they are really good for stamping as well but I do know that these work well and I did go down the rabbit hole and I like the colors but I wish there were maybe just a few more colors that's just me you know what I'm like I've got to have all the things so there you go so I'm just adding just a few little dots of um, liquid pearls on here just because I wanted a little bit of metallic on here I, not that I wanted to take it over but just a tiny little touch because it's such a simple layout but I think not every page in your layouts have to be in your albums need to be full on and over the top you know um, I'm just bringing in a paintbrush and just sort of squishing down the lump so when I leave like the little the little ball I just squished it down a little bit just to help create a bit of a plat bit more of a sort of a leaf so or a petal um, yeah and these are my new pens that Taylor bought me the other day from Kmart these are the dot pens but I used them for a line and look they work perfectly and I just use the dot on the other end the large end to create my border so that's it guys it was super simple so I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think. If you would like to see some more simple layouts, let me know. I can do simple. Even though I do crazy and over the top, I can also do simple. So here's a close-up for you. You can see how I smoosh down some of the, the liquid pearls just to give me some metallic on the flowers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of thing. If you're getting value from my videos, please share them around and you know the more people that watch them the more that my ideas will get out there and help other people fall in love with our scrapbooking world that we have so thank you so much for watching don't forget the facebook and instagram and buy me a coffee links are all in the description and i will chat to you again soon bye for now guys